All right, hello everybody, Hassan here, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I wanted to take a look at this YouTube video actually from um, from this gentleman that was actually um, sort of a big news in the late uh, 2010s, uh, I would say mid 2010s, late 2010s, and of course that's Martin uh, Shrekley. And this guy was all, um, obviously in the pharma side in the pharmaceutical side and he founded a company and I mean long story short this guy was sued and he basically was sent to prison um, for fraud securities fraud and so on it's like you know Ponzi scheme that's the type of person this guy was involved with uh, but obviously he was all around the news it was all around the media and actually if I recall there's like a documentary on this guy on Netflix if I remember um, so if you're really curious about find out with this person who the person this person really is in the space uh, highly recommend you guys to look into it uh, if you're really really curious but that's not really why I wanted to make this video actually this video is actually about this guy going over CRISPR as a tool and actually analyzing a company in the CRISPR space of course that being NTLA so that's what I wanted to take a look at this video uh, again, no webcam in this video. Again, like I said, uh, I'm in Montreal. The quality here is not that good. The room I'm in, uh, and I don't, there's no really point of showing my face if you don't get good quality. Uh, but next week we should be back to normal schedule. Okay, so uh, so what? How this uh, this video starts off? Of course, uh, it goes over uh, CRISPR as a whole. Uh, I find it funny that. Uh, he first, uh, he's playing like League of Legends, a video game online for people that don't know while he's actually explaining the stock. It's like multitasking. Uh, that's that's where that's when you know you're next level. Uh, if you know anything about League of Legends, you know that there is no way you can multitask. Almost impossible to multitask, uh, let alone talk and show anything about CRISPR while playing that online video game. But nonetheless here, goes over you know the drugs that uh, Chris, uh, CRISPR NTLA is working on uh, and of course uh, going over the programs and the research the data uh, the stock prices you know looking at milestones of 2023 uh, but most importantly here um, he's actually in minute 34 of this video he's actually started talking about how to price this drug right and actually you know this guy is extremely familiar with the biotech space so uh, you know, when it comes to prices per drug, pr prices per, um, you know, therapy, he's well, well vested and familiar with it, not only because he found it in a company, a company in this space, but also because, you know, he made a lot of money by having that type of knowledge in this space, right, naturally. And he actually throws out the obvious question. I mean, how do you price out a single dro dose drug? You know, you give a single dose and that's it, that's all, right? That's the promise of many of these CRISPR companies, including NTLA, right? How do you price out a drug that you're only going to give it once to a patient? That's it. That's all. And uh, and he actually goes on to compare some other companies in the space. I don't think he goes over the Bluebird one, uh, but he goes over some other companies, uh, not in the CRISPR space, obviously, but just in the biotech space. And he comes up with a value between 2 to $3 million, which is actually what we sort of, in this channel, sort of speculated uh, I think that's still a big range, two to three million. I actually think it's going to be more towards the three, three million mark. Uh, you know, Bluebird got, I believe, 2.7, 2.8 million per therapy, and that wasn't even a single dose. Uh, so I think the single dose probably going to go upwards to three million, if not more. But uh, nonetheless, here, that's what he's doing. And what's interesting here is um, he starts talking about a couple of things. First, he talks about the partnership with Regeneron, how Regeneron in 2016, they paid only... Uh, what is it, uh, $75 million up front, and then he starts computing this business model, right, that, you know, for Regeneron, they're going to get so much money out of this, you know, it's just going to be wild, you know, we're looking at $3 billion just in the first year, potentially, just in the U.S. of revenue, and of course, Regeneron is a partner of CRISPR, uh, NTLA's program, NTLA 2001, right, but nonetheless here, I don't know if you guys can see this. Uh, it's a little bit small here, but he's actually going over every drug in the space, and he's sort of looking at the past quarters of 2021, current quarters 2023, uh, also of course 2022, and potential forward quarters, and he's sort of trying to you know extrapolate the potential of what NTLA 2001 could do, right? 
uh, and he's comparing this drug with Pfizer. And I find that really, really interesting. And there's something really, really interesting here uh, because he looks at the Pfizer uh, Vindakil uh, patient uh, drug. Uh, can't really pronounce it, guys. Sorry about that. But uh, Vindakil uh, drug, and he's going over it, and he's sort of looking at if Vindakil can get from Pfizer, can get about in 2027, could get about, you know, what is it, like 10 um, you know, a revenue of like $2.3 billion. You know, what can NTLA 2001 get when they get FDA approved? And of course, this is largely dependent on many, many things. Uh, so these are just speculation and estimations, right? Don't take this as a, as a you know, as a set in stone. But uh, he goes over to extrapolate these numbers. And if you take a look at these numbers, guys, look at this, guys. This is crazy. You know, you look at these revenues. This is this is mind blowing, right? You look at every year, you get like what two point five billion dollars. I mean, that's just that's just straight up cash in the bank, right? They're looking at he's he's sort of suspecting that this could just that single program NTLA two thousand one plus NTLA two thousand two. I think he's being extremely conservative on the NTLA two thousand two being only like five hundred million per year. Um, but if you add those up, that's three billion dollars cash for NTLA. Of course, that's spread out with Regeneron, their partners. Um, you know, original run split, you can see that. Uh, you take a look at this uh, model here. This is really interesting, guy. Look at the net income for this uh, this company here, just uh, for NTLA. Look at this, guys. Hold on. Let's take a look if we can find it. Uh, look at the revenues. Of course, he's speculating that the revenue is going to drop, but that's only for looking at NTLA 2001, 2002, looking at the revenue dropping in the late 30s and 2040. But I think you should be extremely naive to think that the NTLA is only going to focus on these programs, right? This is just the beginning, right? They're going to have multiple programs, multiple partnerships. They even have wholly owned programs like NTLA uh, 6001, I believe. So, uh, I mean, this is this is just, you know, I, I mean, in my opinion, you know, these first programs are just a glimpse of what a company like NTLA could do in the upcoming 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You know, this is going to be a huge, huge revenue maker. Um, and Martin Shrekley here uh, clearly demonstrates that. And I, and I think there is value of looking over this because he's not just some random guy, investor who's just like trying to compute a business model analyst. This guy founded a biotech company. This guy obviously gamed the system in the, in up to a point where he's prison for I believe seven years in a federal prison. Um, this guy obviously has knowledge in the biotech space, pricing wise. He obviously has tre tremendous knowledge in the space. So, you know, I really think there's a value here looking at his business model here. And if he's saying that your 2030 is going to be probably the peak of this company just for these two programs, three billion a year revenue, you really, really should take that seriously, guys. You know, we're in 2023. You know, this this is obviously going to take a few years to play out, but if only these two programs are going to get them three billion, in my opinion, is being extremely generous, um, extremely sorry, conservative rather with NTLA 2002 revenue. And he's obviously not accounting in for other partnerships, for other programs, for the whole only, whole only owned programs that NTLA also owns, like the program I just mentioned previously. Um, I think there's something here. There's really something here. I'm really, really curious to see what you guys think, guys. Like I said, I uh, just wanted to make a video here about, you know, this, this type of video. I can't believe I didn't run into this video uh, before. It was for sure published just, you know, a few weeks ago. So, probably why I missed it, but uh, hopefully you guys appreciate this video. As always, guys, subscribe if you're not, like this video if you found value. Let me know in the comments below, guys, what do you guys think about Martin Sheckley analyzing NTLA stock and sort of predicting these numbers? Do you think he's way off? Do you think he's on ball? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully with a potential webcam. We'll see. I'll see you guys.